32, you say? The Hideous Cavern. The Foul Cavern is covered in mounds of filth, decay, and rotting corpses. Some of these corpses are those of enormous spiders and huge bats. Others are humanoid. The stench is overwhelming. Torn and rotting flesh is mixed with something even fouler. Otus. The only illumination is a pale green light, maybe even some, uh, what are they called, uh, the slime things. The only illumination is a pale green light, which comes from all around. By the light of this hideous glow, you suddenly see forms rising from the filth. What kind of forms today? Just some great Otu. They rise up from the filth to attack. Immense purple worms! Oh. Huge beetles! You're surrounded. <laughs> By a hundred enemies. This is going to take a little while. Uh, the priority is the purple worms with the poison attack. The beetles do nothing. Uh, we're going to speed this up. This is this is going to take forever. Uh, until we can get some fireballs off. And then I'll speed it right up. Hold on, hold on. Is this the time? This is the time. Boom! Please don't be interrupted. And then we're gonna send uh, fireballs the other way. It's pretty good. I just wanna make sure I hit the two worms primarily. Yeah, that's a good one. There you go, good stuff, Misadventure in DD. All right. Well, the boring beetles will just boringly die. Uh, I'm gonna... Aaron's gonna take a hit, or four, just to kill that worm quickly. All right, here we go. This better be good. Pay big bucks for these meteor swarms. The first one hit two enemies. The second one, not doing a whole lot of damage, but uh, you know. <laughs> kind of feel like the fireball would have been better, honestly. Meteor Swarm just doesn't really live up to expectations. Sadly, you can't overcast Delayed Blast Fireball, but I think that would have worked better. It just does more damage and has a bigger range. Keep Aaron on the corner here. So there's one worm left and then a bunch of garbage. Like, literally garbage. I'm not even joking. Nice to have Aaron and Thor on the corners. They're the most tanky. Drow's not in the best spot. And there's two worms left. Don't forget. Hmm. I'm just going to burn a bunch of fireballs. There's just too much enemies here. So I get the feeling the solution to this dungeon is a bit of a backtrack. They're gonna make us uh, go all the way back to the entrance and then climb all the way back up again, which is kind of rude. Definitely a time waster. <coughs> Maybe the teleporter works now or something. Somehow I doubt it. There's still a worm to the top left. 
The OTUs get, uh, I should show you, they, they get quite a few attacks. Uh, well, just two attacks per round, but two D10, two, two D10s of damage, which is pretty good. And, yep, beep, indeed. get that worm out. We got hit. We didn't die. Alright, worm gone. So no more poison, just some damage. Should be easy now. I'm surprised the beetles are hitting us as often as they are, really. They've, uh, they're not particularly good combat at our level. They just start surrendering, yeah. All right, how much do we get for that? 25,000 XP, Whew. Almost everyone's ready for a level. And we're on a new floor. We've never been down here before. Let's just save it. You walk through the rotting remains of dead things. Yeah, there might not be much down here. It's kind of the garbage dump. Bones crunch under your feet and the smell of putrefaction fills your nostrils. So that'll be the stairs up, I'm assuming. Or that'll be the stairs up. Okay, that's the outside. We'll just do the, in the inside quick. This is the deepest and most grotesque mound of carry-on and awful. Let's go find some treasure, boys. You dig through the mound of filthy pale... of filth. Pale bugs swarm over decaying flesh. There's something hard and black. It's moving. <laughs> We're screwed. Oh, they're just beetles. There is black slimy stuff that could be very tr problematic, but it's not here. Just scream. Ah! Their antenna quivering with anticipation. The great beetles move in for the kill. <laughs> Does nothing. <laughs> Yell again. There you go. Boring beetles are very angry. We're still on uh, super speed, which is not fast enough. Alright, at least one fireball is required. have a drink every time I cast fireball. Even a saving throw is an insta-kill. So boring. You were hoping for black slime, I take it? Alright. Beep, beep, beep. Battle over. Yeah, those guys are not even worth any experience. Well, we tried digging. Alright, we've been everywhere except possibly the way out. See? You try to slog through the heaps of awful, but there's nowhere to go. Yeah, it's funny how Dragon Quest slimes are like easiest of them all, and then in D&D is like, no, no, no. I'm surprised the beetles think they should fight us, honestly. I mean, they're not particularly smart, of course, but, uh, I guess, you know, with an ant hill, it doesn't really matter how many ants you kill with a magnifying glass or whatever. It's not like they learn that you're too strong for them. And this is kind of like squishing ass. They sting a little, but overall, you know, they have no hope 1v1. Are we the bad guys? <laughs> Once again. I think I have to check some weights here. I think uh, Tim might be overloaded. Yeah, he's lost some movement here. I'm gonna drop some steel, we'll say like 500. And check. 
There you go. Back up to max. Just all the gold we find. Yeah, we also got too much here. Sorry, Thornum, you got too much garbage. And really, money. I can't imagine we need that much money. Okay, let's check the south door first, or whatever this is. Oh, this once was a staircase, but it is no longer. So we got one way to go. We have no ways to go. Well, there's metal slimes. I don't know what they're... I don't know if there's a D&D &D analog to metal slimes. They've been around since the beginning. There are, like, king slimes, which are, like, combo of a whole bunch of slimes. I don't know. So, uh, how do we get out of here? Climb to the top, I suppose? After a disgusting climb, you discover that it is possible to climb out through the hole in the roof. Yeah. So, just random escape. You climb to the north. The air is not much better, but there is stone under your feet. It's another floor we've never been on. Alright, this tower goes on much longer than I thought. At least the spiders learn not to mess with us. Let's not fall down again. Okay, so that's a pit. Can't go that way. Oh! Oh my! Haven't had any of these yet. A group of Hydra roar and writhe. Fun! <laughs> That's a lot of Hydras! Wowzers! So how tough do you think these guys are? Uh, four attacks per turn at 1d12 each. No bonus damage, just 1d12. And uh, Thacko of seven. Eh, they could be tougher. They could be worse. And they're all kind of bundled up down there, just waiting to get fireballed. Let's have Aaron out front guarding the line. And then the mages behind throwing down fireballs. I really need to end this episode and probably the stream fairly soon. This is this dungeon's gone on about twice as long as I thought it was gonna go. Every dungeon in Dark Queen of Crin is really long, I think is the lesson. Yeah, let's send Fireball down. Say hi. Not a very good Fireball, only 43 damage. Pretty light for our taste these days. How about Fireball number two? Good defense. Got one on the guard. Uh, I think we'll try to melee the rest. Save those fireballs for later. Oh, they're kind of all blocked in there, but... Uh, so far, this seems to be working pretty effectively. You just... You know, you, you burn down most of their HP with a fireball, and then you can just go on defense mode, and they just run into your spikes. Come at me, bros. Yeah. They're coming. This way, they don't get the first attack. We get it. There's probably faster ways to do this. It's kind of fun. I mean, I'm enjoying it. Oh, he actually got an attack off. Alright, good enough. Alright, 11,000 experience. Not bad. What do we get? Some more stuff we don't really need, but we'll take it. All I care about is magical loot right now. If it's not a longsword plus five, leave it on the ground. Spiders have learned better for now. 
Okay, we're on the opposite side of that pit we found. Then... All the way around the outside. Good. There's one little tile here. Nothing in it. There's a secret wall here? <laughs> it's a secret! I shouldn't even have seen that. I don't know. It's cheating. I saw that on the minimap. How would you have guessed to go through that one random wall? There's a pile of rubble. I mean, is that the only way out? That might literally be the only way out. Which is pretty good. Wow, would you just have to randomly bump into walls so you get out of here? You could fall back down into the bottom pit, but... I kind of think you'd be stuck here until you... Either someone notices it when they walk by, if it's possible. I don't know... Even searching, it doesn't seem to pop up anything. I mean, I feel a little bit bad for seeing it on the minimap, but how the heck would you have ever gotten out of here without that? Maybe there's one of those random events just while you wander around. Like the random girl that just showed up out of the blue after we... So there's two of them. That's pretty rude. That's not even where you'd expect the teleporter to be, because there's a staircase here, so that same tile has a hidden door with a teleporter behind it. That's nuts. I feel like there must be something that tips you off. Right? Would you just end up bonking against every wall in this? I think you, you probably would, because you'd be trapped here without it. Okay, that's, that's pretty bad dungeon design. Don't do this to your players, guys. Alright, passing through a brilliant illusion of a wall, you discover an ornate marble arch. Form and color flow together just beyond the archway. As you go through the archway, you feel dizzy. Bits of wood and metal surround gaping holes in the floor on your left. It looks like this might be the remains of a gnomish device. I think we found his actual inner home. I want to see... If the other one takes me to the same place. Nope. You're looking at the remains of a shattered teleporter. <laughs> so this takes you back to the entrance. And if you come here, you have to drop back down the pit. So there's two secret doors. One takes you back to the beginning of the dungeon. The other takes you to potentially the end of the dungeon. Good luck guessing that. The reason I want to be here is I want to check the entrance here. Remember, the, the girl was like, it's under the porch. But I thought I'd go here and search the entrance. Huh, I don't know any other porches. Because if you move from that tile, you leave. It appears that the only way to progress here was to jump down the pit, climb up the pile of rubble, find a secret door, but not the wrong secret door. Wow, what? I'm gonna have a look at the uh, guidebook once we're done here. If that's really the only way to get through, poor form game, poor form.
Let's try to finish this one up though. Two and a half hours in. Holy smokes. Future tubers, I must have cut this episode in half. This is, this is crazy. The floor here is strewn with gnomon, gnomish debris. You've stepped off a crumbling edge of a pit. Fall stoically. <laughs> yep. You could grab the edge, admire the debris, scream, or fall stoically. As you fall, you have a brief sensation, and then you fall and fall and fall. Back to the bottom. Little did they know I have a save rating for me. <laughs> yeah, we're not doing that twice. <laughs> so, uh, for the first time, there's actually a pit that you can't see. Oh. Fragments of a gnomish device surround the poorly concealed pit to your east. But I started here, so I didn't get that vision. Because I was just, just like, oh, here we go. Uh, I guess I'll go south. <laughs> a nicely appointed hallway. Comfortable looking study. An empty bookcase. A finely furnished bedroom. Well-crafted dining tables. Efficient kitchenettes. A large closet. Looks like it hasn't been used in years. Should have been some treasure in there. This is quite obviously a wizard's laboratory. Though more disheveled than most. And before you stands the unlikely looking wizard himself. Oh, it's not abandoned? He is standing at an old battered workbench, staring at a model of the lighthouse tower. The light in the model is slowly turning. Tiny waves lap at its feet. Next to the tower is a small whirling vortex of energy. He continues working, ignoring you completely. Ah, uh, we'll wait a little while at least. He stares intently at the two small models and mumbles something under his breath. breath. Attack him. Come on, I'm patient. We just waited two and a half hours to get here. We'll just have a little knock. Ahem. <clears throat> Alright, we'll yell at him, I guess. There's no options. Unless you want to attack him. He looks up from his work and frowns. Ah. Well, it's so hard to get any peace these days. I am Vestilian, and I suppose you want to ask me some questions or some nonsense. Well, here you are, and it can't be helped. You might as well tell me what you want. The wizard scowls. <laughs> Show him the to-do list. Here, I found your list. You disturbed my work to show me this? And then in mid-scowl, Fastilian becomes distracted reading the list. Oh, interesting. He puts the paper down in a pile on the workbench. Uh, you were saying? <laughs> Do you explain your mission? No, we leave. <laughs> we just deliver him his note and get out of here. <laughs> Yes. Festilian becomes suddenly attentive. When you finish your story, he talks to you in animated tones. You write it down. Erdegard somehow followed us all the way here through the garbage. Maybe dodge the garbage adventure. Festilian speaks. Hmm, uh, well then, I suppose it's a good thing you came here after all. There's evil at work in Theonel to the south, you know. Oh, I'm supposed you don't know, and uh, that's why you're here, isn't it? Well, yes, there's evil at work in Theonol, and Trandomir's probably behind it. He's sworn to conquer all of Tal Talidus, actually. Never was a nice guy in that Talidomir. The Draconians are up to no good, and Theonol's involved, no doubt about it. Uh, the Herder folk might help, but uh, probably would, in fact. You can find them in the east of Trillion, and the, if the price is right, the price is always high, and you ought to find the Oracle of Tengur in the Tomes of Kristoffen. Uh, you can't beat the Oracle for a good augury. And that's what you need most likely, a uh, good augury. I had the keys to the inner chamber of the tome somewhere. Hope you guys are writing all that down. The DM does not take a breath, and if you didn't write it down, he will not repeat it. 
As he speaks, Fastilion searches through piles of magical implements and assorted junk. Ah, yes, uh, here they are. I never can remember which one is which, though. He hands you the two keys. One is heavy and rusted, the other is small and gold. And he continues. In another journal. Not really, though. Erdegard is just making it up as we go. Uh, one of these call opens the inner chambers of the tomes. Uh, that should help. Uh, he glanced down at the models and seems lost in thought. Then he looks up. Uh, I did notice that you've been fighting beholders. Uh, I can see the signs of it on your armor. They weren't supposed to be evil things in my tower. The Gorgons are supposed to keep them out. I bet they were working with the beholders, weren't they? I really should go around to training them. Oh well, time to flies. <laughs> yeah, the beholders were not really supposed to be evil or anything. Well, I have to get back to work now. You can see yourself out. And we get a bunch of bonus experience for it. All that for a key. And some idea of where we might go, maybe. He kicked us out of his apartment. Fastilian's laboratory is a disaster. Books are piled everywhere. Many are torn, burned. Bits of scattered glass have been swept into one corner. The wizard throws things about as he continues his work. Oh, I see where we are. <laughs> no! It's too late. I fell for it again. I just want to get out. Let me out. Please, sir. I wish to leave. Took the wrong door. Now is that the only way out of his tower to fall in the garbage and then... Hold on, we're gonna put a save here. This might be the worst dungeon I've done in a long time. <laughs> At least the bats and... Well, now we stink. They know enough to leave us alone. Where's my exit spell? I was just playing Fall Fantasy 1. I, I should have an exit spell. Yes, yes. So I'm looking at the mini-map, and there's these doors to the north. That's what I was thinking I wanted to check. Because I feel like I didn't get properly rewarded for making it all the way up here. Yeah, there's no actual way north here. Wow, secret, secret rooms, all that nonsense. And then guaranteed loops to the bottom of the tower. All right. Well, I don't know how he gets up and down other than jumping into the garbage. Is this dungeon supposed to make you want to uninstall the game? Yeah, probably. All right, now we really do need to end the episode now that we're getting close to three hours of actual initial recording. Um, what we're going to do here before we wrap up is go level up, and I'll just do it from here. Well, I'm going to go to Ham. We'll go to Houston. I'm just going to go to the inn and rest, and then we'll just, uh, you know, now we can officially heal up and everything easily. Um, there's a training hall here and everything, so I don't really feel guilty for uh, leveling up now. So let's have a look at our level up, which is always fun part of the day. Uh, so, what do we get? We have Eren, a level 18 knight of the... whatever he is, sword. Thornum is now a level 15 fight ranger. So he's back up to two attacks per round. That's very helpful. And uh, some better saves. That's all nice stuff. Pixel, level 13 fighter. Two at all. Oh, this is the time. Everyone gets double attacks now. From here on out, everyone... Except Rob has two attacks per turn. And also some nicer saving throws. Look, our saving throws is actually pretty solid. Five out of 20, like that's not bad at all. All those petrifications and ray of death and everything. We have a 75% chance to not die. And then more if we can get uh, 
some equipment or spells that boost it up a bit. All right, Tim's a better cleric, and also also a better mage. Sure. Uh, now at this point in the game, I don't think it really matters. There's not really a lot of spells left to learn for for us here. Uh, that are like we're kind of at the point where there's not much left. So. I almost don't know what to pick because I might accidentally pick something that's a red mage spell and I don't I don't know if I want to like s search through it all. Uh, I'm fairly sure mass invisibility is allowed for white robes, I say not really very confidently. I'm real quickly trying to figure this one out off screen here. I feel like this is one of the ones I've been avoiding but, but at this point, you know, it doesn't matter too much. No, Mass Invisibility is red. What else have we got? Disintegrate, maybe? Disintegrate's red. Uh, Iron Skin, Fire Touch, Curse, Fear, Dimension Door, Confusion, something in there, maybe. There's just not a lot of spells left White Mages can learn. Uh, remove Curse is white, yay. Fire Shield, did I get that yet? Of course I did. It's Fire Touch. Uh, he can learn Confusion, sure, good enough. I'll probably never cast it, but that's a White Mage specific spell. Tim is also Fighter 13, thank you. Jirao is level fight Fighter 13, that's two backstabs if I'm careful. Also Thacko Improvement, not a bad idea. Rob is another level of mage. Uh, I guess we'll take monster summoning just to show this off. Again, there's not a lot of spells actually available at this point. Power, yeah, I think monster summoning is white or red, so it doesn't matter. We could pick up cloud kill, unless that's actually, I think. Yeah, cloud kill is white mage only. That's why we don't have a lot of those available for testing out on mages, on the uh, enemy mages. There really aren't very many spells left, so let's just take Monster Summoning. Okay, so that's all the levels up. Cool, cool. I'll have to spend some time memorizing some new magic after that. But I am actually quite happy we finally hit, you know, two attacks per round for everybody. At level 13 Fighter or 14 Ranger. Um, or 15 Ranger, that is, for Thorinum. Very nice. Now, Eren, he might not be allowed to level up again by the game's rules. I'm not sure if Goldbox Companion will let him level up. Uh, so the plan might be to keep him at level 18 until he's got enough experience to class change to Knight of the Rose at level 18, which shouldn't take me very long to quickly check here. Who needs a one hour long episode? Uh, cleric, 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 knights. So yeah, it doesn't say he can go past level 18 in the manual. So 3.85 million experience to get here. So he's actually a fair ways past level 18 already. He'd probably have enough... Honestly, he'd have enough to get to level 19 normally, I think. Uh, if it was like... It only, he only needs like 350,000 per level, give or take. And uh, he should have 385,000 plus... 3.85 million plus that. Just barely, but technically. Uh, but Knight of the Rose, if we want to switch him to that, he needs 5.5 million to be level 18 Knight of the Rose. If we transfer him over right now, he will downgrade to level 15 Knight of the Rose, which sounds really bad, so we're not going to do that. Other than that, uh, boy, we got a lot of experience. We got a couple pieces of new gear. I am going to end this episode any second now, but one last thing will be to look at the clue book and just to see if we missed anything, because I might off camera go back to that hellhole. But I am curious if there's supposed to be any tips to how to get through that, because I feel like a lot of that was just random guesswork, and I'm not a big fan of that. So uh, Luminary Tower, this is where we were. Boy, yeah, this is a huge dungeon. This No wonder this took so long. So, uh, you get two keys. He's quite mad. Filled his towers with traps, blah, blah, blah. He forgot about them. You have to make up the tower, get some experience.
The way to the tower is actually by... Location 50 on first deep. So this is the bottom. Yeah. And then secret entrance. Number 50. 50 events in here. That's That might be the largest dungeon we've ever had. The strange of powerful vortex on turning f on energy le on level 5 was the uh, the orb. Once you're past there, you're not supposed to rest. So you're supposed to go to level 11, get stuck by the door, go back to level 10, meet the girl. And then supposedly the clue leads you to where we went, but I didn't figure that out. So a bunch of wandering monsters, you can rest in the eye of the vortex and his closet and whatever. I'm just looking for anything... There was that cursed longsword that feels like that was days ago, but we found a cursed longsword. Back from the Spectres. Yeah, if you knew about the trick, you could have skipped the whole dungeon. You would have missed out on some experience. Lots of beholders. So many beholders. Teleporters. Hmm. I don't know. I did turn the lever off to turn off the teleporters. Oh yeah, we got these, um... We got the scrolls. This shouldn't really matter, but we have Red Mage Scroll with Disintegrate, Mass Invisibility, and Meter Swarm. But we've already, like, learned all these spells, pretty much. I guess if I get one of my new Red Mages to level 9 magic, you know, I don't have to teach them Meteor Swarm, because we've got a scroll of it. And then we've only got one White Mage that probably knows all this stuff. I actually, these are level 8 spells. Or level 9 spells, that is. So, this is some really high level magic. I guess it saves us a slot, but it doesn't really matter at this point. We're such a high level, it's... You know, it's fine. Iron Golems. Yeah, that's the event. So, we did get a Longsword plus 4 and Bracers of AC2. I guess it's probably worth climbing the whole way to get these. The room the teleporter in is is in is under the porch. Wait, what? Oh. How would you That's crazy. Yeah. If you mapped it out, you know, you, you, you if you were drawing this out and you had them lined up, the wall you bump through is under the entrance. That, oh my, that is insane. That's the tip, yeah. David got it in chat. That's the only way you'd be able to figure it out. And even then, how would you find the way out out? Because that teleporter, you'd have to get... I guess the, the, um, the crazy wizard was like, yeah, take the door in the north. I guess that's it. You have to go all the way through the loop, go back to this floor, and just bump into the north. You'd still never even get out unless you could find both of them. Yeah, that's great. That's a great dungeon, man. All right, I'm. There was very little treasure here. There was one cursed sword, one good sword, one bracer, some scrolls that are basically garbage, and a very, very long, very punishing dungeon. Dark Queen of Crin is not messing around. Future tubers, I don't know how I did this episode. This is two hours and forty-five minutes of straight recording. Uh, I I must have cut this up into two or three episodes because that's insane. I. Uh, I just kept thinking, we're almost done, we're almost done. We must be nearly there, and nope, not even close. But, for now, that's the end of this episode. 
Thanks for watching. Hope you guys have enjoyed. Wait a second. How did Aaron get so much HP again? When did he go from like 140 to 180? He's supposed to get like 2 HP per level up. When did that happen? And the same with Thorinum. <laughs> Someone review the footage. Did everyone just get like... Yeah, everyone got like 20 HP from that last level up, not two. I mean, I'll, I love it. That's great. I'll take it. But I mean, it feels a little bit cheaty to suddenly have an extra 20 HP on everybody. Unless he secretly... I don't know if anyone else noticed it. But somehow everyone got a whole bunch of bonus HP. I don't know where it came from, because the level up gave us like one or two each. I certainly didn't click anything weird. I didn't go to the editor and do it myself. That's a mystery for another day. Blue Ankylo is going to end this episode. If I can, uh, we only got, we only got one level up each. It wasn't that much. That's like two HP per level, right? One or two HP only. Because we don't get dice anymore, we just get a plus one per level. Anyway, I'll try to figure it out later. Future tubers, thanks for watching however many episodes this was. I hope you guys have enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.